Hello, my name is Danielle and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I think the title for this video really says it all, or at least I'm hoping that it does. My plan for today for this video is to be reviewing a purchase that I regret making. And that purchase is the Wayne Goss surprise bag or however exactly they named that. It was an offer made through Beautylish in November at some point. And I made the purchase at the very end of November. In fact, I started my no buy on the first day of December of 2021 and I was anticipating that. So on the very last day of November, I made this purchase along with I think one or two others because of course got to get in that panic buying. So <laughs> so this was one of those purchases for me. I made this purchase just as a spur of the moment decision. It was definitely an impulse buy and unfortunately that has meant that it hasn't gone the best for me. So I'm hoping that by sharing my experience, you all can learn from my mistake and that this will be a learning experience for myself as well. So if you wanna hear all the tea, I hope that you'll stick around. And if you are interested in more content like this, content related to conscious consumerism, a no-buy experience, the beauty industry, and the intersection of all of those different things, I hope that you'll consider subscribing because that's what we're all about here. So with that all being said, let's just get on into it. I went back and looked just to check and be sure, but yes, I did make this purchase on November 30th of 2021 from Beautylish and the total for this was $174.41. Now that total does also include a couple of other items. I purchased that same day two different spoolie brushes from Chikuhoro and a scalp conditioner from Sasha Juan. So the purchase total included those three products as well as the Wayne Goss surprise bag in light. And I do want to be sure to mention that I actually do not regret at all those other purchases that I made in that one order. I don't regret those two Chikuhoro spoolie brushes. They are very useful in my day-to-day -day routine. I was in need of at least one spoolie brush to use on my brows and then the other one I decided to get for my lashes if I ever needed to split up some clumps or anything like that. So those have been very useful. I don't regret that at all. Could I have settled with just one spoolie brush? Definitely. But since I have the two and of course giving myself a little bit of grace as I was entering into the no buy and having a little bit of a panic session there, I'm fine with the fact that I have them both. I will use them both. So that's totally fine. Don't regret that at all. And the Sasha Juan conditioner throughout winter, often my scalp can get kind of dry and a little bit itchy. And that scalp conditioner has done wonders. The Chikuhoro brushes were each $12, so that was $24 in total to get both of those brushes. And the Sasha Juan conditioner was $34. So in total, those only accounted for $58 of the order. And the Wayne Goss surprise bag in light was $105. So of course that was the real kick in the pants, right? That was the big ticket item and it's the one that I dislike out of all of them. That is why I really wanted to dig into this review, give you my thoughts and reflections on this whole experience so that hopefully we can learn together from my mistakes. To preface, I want to share some of my thoughts about why I thought the Wayne Goss surprise bag would be a good option for me. Prior to this, the only products that I had tried from Wayne Goss's brand were the Artist Collection brushes. Those are the brushes in his line that are made with gray squirrel hair and they have beautiful wooden handles and they're made in the style of, I believe, Japanese calligraphy brushes. 
So that brush collection is very special just for the artistry, how beautiful they are, and for the unique effect that they have when you are applying things onto your skin and the role that they play in my collection. Because the gray squirrel hair is so soft, the application is very soft on the skin. So if you have a really pigmented blush or highlighter, those brushes are really beautiful for offering a more softened look to those products. And I like to use the largest brush in that collection as more of a powder brush or a brush to like kind of swipe away eyeshadow particles that have fallen under the eye or things like that. So I really love that collection. I'm looking forward to perhaps trying more Wayne Goss brushes in the future, but unfortunately there were no brushes included in this collection and that was made clear in the little blurb that I saw online or in an email or whatever from Beautylish and that was fine with me because I was most interested in trying makeup products from Wayne Goss's line as I hadn't tried any before this. I had come close to buying some in the past and there were certain formulas that I was really interested in trying. I was especially interested in trying one of the blush and highlighter duos or the new eyeshadow palettes that he has come out with in 2021, the pearl and the tourmaline, I think. Unfortunately, as a spoiler, none of those products were included. <laughs> of course, it's a gamble. You don't really know what you're going to get, but it was still a disappointment. I wish that those were the formulas that would have been included, but Nonetheless, I signed up for the surprise, right? And it's just unfortunate that the surprise didn't work in my favor. But let me just go ahead and tell you what I did receive. I received one of the bronzer and contour duos. I received the lightest color because of course I did choose the bag in the color light. The next thing I received was the Topaz eyeshadow palette, which was Wayne Goss's first eyeshadow palette that he released. I also received two eyeliners, one in the shade Obsidian, I believe, and the second in the shade Deep Amethyst. Then I received three lip liners, one lipstick, and one lip gloss. And We'll get into all that when we get there. But let's just start off from the top with the bronzer and contour duo. So from the brand's perspective, I think that this was a good move to include the bronzer and contour duo. It does show Wayne Goss's formula for powder products. I'm assuming that there would be a similar type of formulation to his blushes and other powder products. It's also something that is a little bit more difficult to screw up, right, than a blush because some people might have different blush preferences on themselves. Some people might prefer a brighter blush or a more neutral blush. Whereas the contour and bronzer duos were just divided up by the depth of your skin. So the versatility of the bronzer and contour duos does make that a good and safe choice for the brand and gives the consumer a good idea of what other powder products would be like from Wayne Goss. From that side of things, I totally understand why they included it. I think it was a good choice. The only unfortunate thing is that I had already decided <laughs> once upon a time long ago that the Wayne Goss duo wasn't for me. If you remember or are familiar, the Wayne Goss duo was released around the same time as the Patrick Ta duo. And at that time, I had decided that the Patrick Ta was the better fit for me. So when both of these duos were released at what felt like the exact same time, when that happened, I waited, I took in all of the reviews, I agonized over this choice because I did want to buy one or the other and I wanted to be sure that I was making the right choice for me. And in the end, I decided on the Patrick Ta. When I made the decision of which to buy, the Patrick Ta or the Wayne Goss, I didn't buy it because of the formulations necessarily. I figured that they would both be pretty elegant and I didn't even think really that I was much of a cream person before trying this product. I thought that I would prefer a powder actually. The thing that made me buy the Patrick Ta was the difference in the color and the color saturation. It's funny on camera, at least from what I can tell from my monitor, the contrast isn't so strong, but in person, I can tell you that the Patrick Ta is much more muted 
than the Wayne Goss. So I'll do a little swatch to hopefully show you what I mean. Here are the little finger swatches. Over here, we have the Patrick Ta, and then on this side over here are the Wayne Goss. I'm hoping that this can show you a little bit better than just looking at the pans side by side, but the Patrick Ta are much more muted. On this side, we have the Patrick Ta, and then on this side over here, we have the Wayne Goss. And the Wayne Goss are just much more contrasted to one another. And for me personally, with my skin tone, I have a bit of an olive undertone. A two orange bronzer can really show up pretty harsh on my skin um, and look very, very orange. So as I'm sure you can probably see, the Wayne Goss is much more orange and the Patrick Ta is a bit more yellow. And on me and my skin tone, it looks more natural, more neutral. I don't necessarily have a yellow undertone. It doesn't come off as yellow on my skin. It just looks like a really natural looking bronze. And the contour is the same. It looks like a really natural contour. The color actually does have a bit of a neutral leaning olive undertone, I think. So when deciding on a contour and bronzer duo, I did decide to go with the Patrick Ta because I was worried about the oranginess of the Wayne Goss bronzer and also the shimmer. I generally prefer a bronzer without shimmer, so that was a bit of a turnoff for me as well. Of course, that is just personal preference, and unfortunately, that is just where my preferences don't align with Wayne's vision, I guess, for his bronzer contour duo. But that is what initially swayed me to go with the Patrick Ta instead of the Wayne Goss. But with all of that being said, as far as the Wayne Goss formula is concerned, these are really beautiful. The powders are very finely milled. They actually feel silky on your finger if you swatch them. So in that way, they're so cosmetically elegant, very beautiful. They apply really um, sheer, actually, on the skin, um, so it looks very natural. The, the contour especially is that way. It applies in a very natural looking sort of way to provide believable shadow to your face. The bronzer I found because of the shimmer, the shimmer is not just a shimmer, it's more like a golden reflect, almost like a golden iridescence. And because of that, I found that I do want to be a little bit more careful in how much of the bronzer I apply. This is part of why I do prefer a matte bronzer because you don't have to be quite so dainty about applying it. You can kind of just like put it everywhere and paint it on your face and not have to worry about it too much. It kind of just blends itself out. But with the shimmer and the golden reflect, the almost iridescence of this bronzer, it is noticeable when you apply more in one area versus another, for example. And I think some of that may also just have to do with the color of this on my skin tone. I had this exact situation happen where I must not have powdered my face super evenly because there were some spots on my forehead. On the left side of my face, the bronzer applied very smoothly. And then on the right side, it must have gotten a little bit more caught on some of the wetness left from my foundation. So I was left with a bit of an orange patch and it also shone gold. So you could definitely tell it was very eye-catching that there was a shiny golden orange little patch on my forehead which was not very cute. So if I'm being careful with applying the bronzer, it can be applied very sheerly and look very, you know, just like subtly glowy on the skin. If I go in with a really light hand and actually use the Artist Collection brushes from Wayne Goss to apply it, it looks very nice. Because I have the Patrick Ta Duo and because there was a little bit of a learning curve and a little bit of daintiness that has to go with the Wayne Goss um, bronzer specifically in the duo. I did consider at first decluttering it, but the contour is so beautiful on my skin. It creates the perfect type of shadow illusion on the skin. It looks so natural, 
something about the undertone on that works wonderfully for me whereas the bronzer kind of stands out a bit too much for my liking on my skin. I do think that the orangey-ness of the bronzer will become less evident during the summer so I am especially interested in using that side of the duo during the summertime and I think that regardless I can make it work for me no matter the year as long as I apply it a little bit more intentionally and kind of daintily. So I am planning, at least for now, to keep the Wayne Goss Bronzer Contour Duo in my collection, but at the end of the day, at least right now, I do still prefer my Patrick Ta. So if those are competing too much with each other in my collection, I may end up decluttering the Wayne Goss in the future, but for now, I think they, they complement each other actually pretty well, so I'm fine with having them both for the time being trying it out a little bit more in the summer and then deciding later on what I think. Next is the eyeshadow palette and I was very interested in trying out Wayne Goss's eyeshadow formula but again this one is kind of on me as far as my preferences. This was my least favorite palette that he released. In case you're unfamiliar the palette is basically just one of warm neutrals it's one that I feel most all of us probably have in one way or another. We all have these shades in our collection for the most part. So it's just a little bit less exciting than some of the other ones that he had. The pearl palette, especially those kind of rosy nudes. I feel that one is very on trend right now with kind of some rosier tones being more prevalent in the makeup market right now. But just speaking to the formula of these eyeshadows, they're good. They're just nothing really fantastic, I guess. This palette includes, I would say, probably three satins and two mattes and then one kind of celestial shade. Again, Wayne Goss's powders are very nice. They feel very silky to the touch. The only one that feels a little bit less that way is the black shade in this palette. Even the celestial shade feels very smooth, very nice to the touch, and it also applies very smoothly on the skin. The color payoff is very good. The only ones that I really needed to go over again at all were the more orangey brown, this one right here, right next to the black, and then the black itself. So generally speaking, the color payoff was really good. These shadows all apply very beautifully to the eyes, very smoothly. I really do think that this could be a great everyday palette for somebody who has this preference for your neutrals more of the warm neutrals. This would give you a great, reliable, everyday look that would be very similar day to day if that's what you're looking for. Unfortunately, this just comes down to preference and for me, this just isn't it. For myself, the reality is that I have these shades in multiple different palettes. This warmer, almost orangey, reddy brown um, just is not my favorite type of shade to wear on, on me because as I said, oranges look very orange on my skin tone. Um, and normally that would be fine, right? Like it wouldn't be a big deal to have a shade like that in a palette. I have this type of shade many times over in my collection. The only problem here is that it's one of only six shades in the palette. So your options with this palette are just very limited. And for that to be one of only six options here is, a detriment for me personally, at least with my preferences. My personal favorite shade in this palette is this brown satin. It is the most neutral brown in this palette and it applies beautifully. It's the one shade that made me really consider keeping this palette. I also really enjoy this nice kind of, it's a champagne, but it's like a warm champagne. It's very beautiful and looks very great in the inner corner. I have it on today. I have both of these colors on today. And then the celestial shade is very nice. Unfortunately though, these are just very common colors. I have shades like this already that are in a similar satin formula that look pretty much the exact same. Like I, I have all of those colors on today and this is a very basic neutral eye look 
that I could get with nearly any palette that I own already. Even this Celestial shade, which is like the most unique formula in this palette, right? Um, I have this type of formula multiple times over. This is, I would say, most similar to Charlotte Tilbury's. Uh, I think she calls it the pop formula, maybe. Um, it basically, it's just, you know, like a glittery topper. This feels incredibly similar and looks similar even to Charlotte Tilbury's uh, type of pop formula. So I have, if not this exact shade in that formula, then several other types of shades in almost this exact same formula. And because this is basically just like a champagne-y shimmer topper, glitter topper, I have multiple that are like this in different formulas as well. Natasha Denona has another really similar formula to this, especially the glitter topper in the retro mini. I would say the formula is very similar to this. She has some other glitter toppers um, or she has had in the past other glitter toppers that were a little bit different in formula, but but that one specifically feels very similar to this one in case you have that one for comparison. But one brand that is very popular that I have multiple palettes from that has a similar type of shade that has the same purpose, but the formula is quite different is Pat McGrath. Her astral shades that are like glittery toppers, those are so stunning. I have two that are basically this exact shade. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's the astral shade that is in both her Midnight Sun Mothership palette and in her Divine Rose 1 Mothership palette. That astral shade is like a dupe, but with a different formula. But with all of that being said, even though the formulas in this palette are really nice, and I enjoy the process of applying it on my eyes. Unfortunately, I just don't need these colors. They're not my colors. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this one on. It's a real shame because if I would have gotten the pearl palette, I would have been much more likely to keep that one. Now I know that I do enjoy Wayne Goss's formulas. Perhaps in the future, I will buy that pearl palette but the reality is that I also have those colors as well, so I don't really need that. It's not a need, but um, perhaps in the future that would be a nice everyday option for me. Okay, next are the eyeliner pencils. Um, these are like coal pencils, which I really enjoy, especially for the waterline. I have both of these on today. Obsidian I have on in the upper waterline. I actually have the, the black shadow from the Topaz palette blown out on my top lid as a liner, but I have this Obsidian Coal liner on my waterline, my upper waterline, I should say. And then I have the Deep Amethyst on my lower waterline. I'm not sure how well you can see the difference in color there. They are both very dark. I do think that you would be able to see the purple come out a bit more if I would have buffed it out, if I would have applied it like I did this black eyeshadow and buffed it out in the same sort of way. I'm sure that the purpleness of Deep Amethyst would have been a bit more clear. I can see that the lower waterline is purple, but I'm not sure how well that will translate to anybody that's like a foot or more away from me. So, um, that's a shame, but it is a really beautiful deep purple eyeliner. So I'm really not mad at all about the inclusion of two eyeliners in the surprise bag. I think that was a great addition. My only thing is that everybody and their mom and their mom's dog has a black pencil liner, right? <laughs> like that's the most common color of pencil liner. So I wish that in addition to Deep Amethyst, which was a great addition to my collection, I wish that they would have included another type of color for the surprise bag, one that even could have gone along with the Tobes palette. I actually took a quick look on Beautylish to see what other colors were available. And the ones that interested me most personally were some of the brown options. So there was Precious Opal and Tiger's Eye, which I think if memory serves, they were both kind of shimmery brown colors. 
and perhaps in person one of those would have been a little bit more olive or more red or something like that. Um, and then they also had a rich hazel which was a matte and maybe that was supposed to be more of an olivey type of brown. Um, it was difficult to tell from the swatches online. But regardless, all of those three different types of brown colors or brownish colors would have been more appealing to me than just a standard black, which I already have at least once or twice over in my collection. So um, that would have been a cool addition, but it is what it is. The formula of these is really nice. I think it's lasting in the waterline really well. So perhaps in the future, I'll pick one of those up anyways. And now for the majority of the surprise bag, we have lip products. And that was maybe the biggest shock was just that there were so many lip products and the breakdown of types of products was a little bit confusing as well because there were three lip liners included, but then only one lipstick and one gloss. I just feel like maybe two lip liners and then two lipsticks and a gloss or, you know, two glosses and a lipstick. Perhaps that would have been a little bit more of an equal breakdown of products, made a little bit more sense. But really, in the grand scheme, that is the least of my concerns with the lip situation here. The main issue for me is that these are the lightest colors that Wayne Goss offers. For lip liners, I got Light Nude, which is, I think, his lightest one. And then Vintage Pink, which is not actually pink, but I'll show you that. And then I also got Mauve for my third one. And Mauve is my favorite of the three. It's not Mauve, in my opinion, but it is a little bit deeper, a little bit more wearable on my skin tone. I do have what I would consider to be a light skin tone. I'm not very tan, but I'm almost wondering if I should have chosen the medium one instead to get a better fit of lip products. I actually did watch other people's reviews of the Wayne Goss surprise bag, and some of them received some brighter lip colors, um, some different ones than I did for sure, but I received only nude colors and they were just not, spoiler alert, they were just not the right nudes for me. But I'll go ahead and give these a swatch. So I hope you can see these are the three lip liners here. This here is light nude, then vintage pink, and then mauve on the end. I'm not sure how well it is showing on camera, but um, this light nude actually on the lip is very concealer lip. It is, I would say, probably the pinkiest, the mauviest of them all. Uh, vintage pink is also concealer lip, but yellow. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's not pink at all, at least on me. It's, it's quite yellow. It's like a yellowy nude. And then mauve is, um, on me, not mauve. It's a bit brighter, a bit more, um, almost terracotta. I also have some other lip liners to show some swatch comparisons so that you can see kind of maybe a little bit more of what I'm seeing. So right next to light nude, I am currently swatching Patrick Ta's lip liner in She's Humble, I think think it's called? Yes. She's Humble, which is the lightest lip liner that I have in my collection. So perhaps you can see what I'm talking about. Um, She's Humble is like a pinky nude and it's a decent amount darker, I would say, and also quite a bit pinkier. In the summer, She's Humble can be a little bit too light for me on my lips. So the fact that it's so much darker to me is kind of shocking. Yeah, so light nude basically would never work for me because I'm just not really into the concealer lip life. Next to vintage pink, I have a couple of ones that I would like to show. Right next to uh, She's Humble, I swatched Patrick Ta, She's Proud which is much more of a neutral nude color 
not very pinky at all. And then I'm going to swatch Kitten by M Cosmetics, which is a little bit of a pinkier nude, just a little bit darker than Vintage Pink. And then next to that one, I'm going to swatch Terracotta by Huda Beauty. Okay, so from, from here over, we have Light Nude by Wayne Goss, then She's Humble by Patrick Ta, She's Proud by Patrick Ta, and then Vintage Pink by Wayne Goss, Kitten by M Cosmetics and Terracotta by Huda Beauty and then Mauve by Wayne Goss. So I hope that you can see that the two lightest lip liners here are um, Light Nude and Vintage Pink from Wayne Goss. Um, all of the ones that I own are darker, <laughs> darker than, than those. In some lighting, She's Proud looks the closest to Vintage Pink and in other lighting Kitten looks closest so I'm not sure exactly what it'll look like on camera. In real life Kitten looks closer just quite a bit darker. The most interesting thing is that Mauve looks closest to Kitten and Terracotta than anything here and those are not Mauve's. <laughs> um, Terracotta is, of course, a terracotta color, um, maybe a little bit more pink in it. And then Kitten, I would say, is closer to like a true terracotta. It's a bit more nude, a little bit less pink. I do have some lip liners that I would consider to be actually mauve that I want to consider or that I want to compare mauve to. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can see this okay. Um, so on the very end here, of course, is mauve. I also re-swatched mauve here in the middle on the bottom um, going vertically and then going horizontally from top to bottom I have Ilona I think is how you pronounce it by Natasha Denona and then there is Wherever Walnut by Makeup Forever and then on the bottom is Good and Plenty by Colourpop. When I think of mauve in my head and what the color mauve should be, it is much closer to Ilona by Natasha Denona. That kind of muted, neutral, kind of on a cooler end of the spectrum, pink, kind of neutral. That's what I consider to be mauve. Not the warm, pinky color of Wayne Goss's mauve. I do still like the color. I'm wearing it today. I have no idea what my lips look like right now, so I apologize. Um, but I was wearing the mauve lip liner with the Wayne Goss lip gloss on top. My husband just called, so I was interrupted and I can't remember exactly what I was talking about. But basically my whole rant, right, about these lip liners, is that they took light very literally, right? They sent the lightest two lip liners in Wayne Goss's line um, and they don't work for me, so uh, LOL. <laughs> um, and also the one color that does work for me, mauve, is not even what I would consider to be mauve. Maybe I'm alone on this one, but that just like, I don't know why that just really irked me when I when I put two and two together that like these colors weren't going to work for me and that the one that worked for me wasn't even the color that it said it was. I don't know. But I'll move on now. Oh, and I, I'm not sure if I actually said this, but I am going to be decluttering light nude and vintage pink because they are not, they're not for me, okay? I almost forgot the last thing is that they have a very dry formula. Um, I know some people don't like dry lip liner formulas. I actually prefer it. Um, some of these that I swatched today have pretty dry formulas and are kind of known for that. Um, like Makeup Forever, I would say that's a pretty dry formula. 
Um, and then definitely Patrick Ta. That that was maybe my driest formula prior to these Wayne Goss ones. But these are like significantly drier. One thing that I was disappointed about when I um, actually I found this out when I was swatching these lip liners in preparation for this video and then went to wash them all off. The very first ones to wash off were the Wayne Goss lip liners. The Wayne Goss disappeared nearly immediately and everything else I kind of had to work to get off of my hand. So I do think that is something that is a shame as well and something that I thought was worth noting. I need to use this lip liner a little bit longer to know exactly, like I haven't done an intensive wear test or anything like that. So some of that I'm sure I will get to know the longer that I have it in my collection and the more that I use it, but I did want to mention that because if it is a really like short wearing type of formula, that is kind of a, a shame and a detriment to it. So I did want to mention that and now we can move on finally to the last two products, the lipstick and the lip gloss. So I received the lipstick shade Cashew and when I opened this shade, literally all I could think was orange. And yes, it does look very orange on me. I hope you can see that next to all of my lip liners. So I just went ahead and added the lip liner swatches. So up top we have Vintage Pink, then directly below that is Lightest Nude. And then of course Mauve is this, this one on the end here, right next to the swatch of the lipstick. The formula of this lipstick is what I would consider a satin. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, so it is called the Luxury Cream Lipstick, which yes, I would say it is more of a creamy type of lipstick. Definitely not matte. Um, I would consider this a satin. It's not glossy, but it's certainly not matte. It has a little bit of a shine to it. My general feeling about the formula is just that it is a standard satin. I didn't notice anything super crazy about it. It was fine. It was a comfortable lipstick. I do actually want to mention that I also did go to Beautylish to look at the other lipsticks in his line. It was, <sighs> Beautylish's swatches aren't always the best, so it was pretty difficult to tell, but this does appear to be one of the lighter ones. But something that I noticed was that Wayne Goss seemed, at least from the swatches, to have a lot of light lip colors. And that was something that was also a turn off for me. I mean, I have light skin and I don't even like those type of colors on myself. So that whole thing just kind of left me with a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth because I'm not confident about the mindfulness of diversity of his lipstick collection if, you know, most of them or half of them, or at least a good chunk of them are colors like this that me as a lighter skinned person can't even wear. I just don't think that Wayne Goss would be the brand that I would recommend to somebody with deeper skin than me to go searching for a lipstick from. Okay, and last but not least, we have the lip gloss from Wayne Goss. And this is one of my favorite products that I received. I will say in the bag. The color is not my favorite. It does appear a little bit milky. The color kind of can settle into the lines of my lips, which isn't great, but you can make a lot more work as far as color goes with glosses. So I'm fine with this. The formula is nice. It has a little bit of a mintiness when you first apply it but that dissipates pretty soon if that's something that turns you off. I hope you can see the shade is incredibly similar to Cashew, the lipstick that I received. It's just a bit pinkier, a bit more coral rather than orange. And I hope that is being communicated on camera. But yeah, very similar in color. It is also, it's not the sheerest lip gloss ever, right? There's a bit of color payoff happening, but even so glosses are just much more versatile than lipsticks are as far as the um, amount of color pop, as far as the amount of color payoff that you can get on the lips. So I find this much easier to wear than say the cashew lipstick. So I am planning to keep this. I'm not rushing to 
go out and buy another Wang Goss lip gloss, but while I have it, that's fine. I do also want to note that it is pretty small. Other than my mini Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, the Wang Goss Bullet is the smallest that I have. Um, and the Wang Goss lip gloss is the smallest lip gloss that I have in my collection. So something else to note when you are paying a luxury price tag, I think size does kind of matter. As an overview, all in all, the things that I'm keeping are the Wang Goss Hyacinth Gloss, the Bronzer and Contour Duo, the mauve lip pencil, and the two eyeliner pencils. So I am keeping five products from Wayne Goss, and I am decluttering four. I am decluttering the Topaz eye palette, the light nude and vintage pink lip liners, and the cashew lipstick. So after paying $105 for these nine products, I am keeping just a little bit over half of them. I'm decluttering four and keeping five products. And that doesn't feel great. <laughs> what I learned from this experience is that I feel much more comfortable sticking with the Wayne Goss brushes. Um, I, I do really like his powder formulas. They are very silky, feel very nice on the skin. I would be interested in checking out the pearl eyeshadow palette maybe one day in the future when I have whittled down my collection enough to warrant bringing another one into my life. From this experience in general, I've learned that I'm not sure I'll ever do this again. <laughs> um, surprise boxes, I think, are appealing in, in some sense, but I've seen how that didn't work out for me. Of course, I knew this was a potential option, but I had hopes that it would go a little bit better for me, and I'm not sure that I want to take that chance again. In the future, I think I would rather just spend even the same amount of money by choosing a few different products that I chose myself that I feel would be perfectly curated to my collection and my preferences. And that's how I would prefer to spend my money from now on. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and sticking through all of the saltiness of, of my review of the lip products and everything else included in this surprise bag from Wayne Goss. I wanted to share my thoughts on this experience because I do think that this was a major learning experience for myself. I think it's one that we can all kind of learn from. I'm hoping that you can learn from my mistake. And I also want to document this as part of my no buy experience. Uh, one of those first lessons that I've learned on my no buy journey, I'm not doing this again. So <laughs> anyways, thank you so much for watching and for continuing on this no buy journey with me. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.